This is the OTB Television Network, a service of Capital District Off-Track Betting. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this week's edition of Horses and Courses. 19 races to bring you from four different venues, including opening weekend at Santa Anita and Breeder, Breeders' Cup preview day at Belmont Park. But we're going to start out three races from Oklahoma Way. Up first, the Remington Park Oaks with Jemima's Pearl, the even money favorite. They're off of the Remington Park Oaks. All the way well. Yankee Union gets out quickly, goes towards the rail, but Sticks Wonder Girl is right there and has position as they cross the line for the first time. Bonnie Parker third, two back towards the outside. Then Jemima's Pearl is fourth and will go wide into the turn. After that, Pedestrian, Lady Jensen, and Yvette Singalo at the back, six off the lead. Midway through the first turn of the Oaks, and up front, Six Wonder Girl has it by a length over Yankee Union. Bonnie Parker wide in third, a length and a half back, going to the back stretch. Lady Jensen moves up in a nice pocket at the rail in fourth. Jemima's Pearl stays clear to the outside, fifth, four off the lead. Then Pedestrian, there sixth. Four clear of Yvette Singalo, who's the trailer. Opening quarter was in 23 and two fifths. Midway up the back stretch in the Oaks and up front, it still sticks Wonder Girl and John Court there by a pair. Yankee Union chasing in second. Bonnie Parker still third. Jemima's Pearl to the outside of Lady Jensen battling for fourth. Less than a half mile to go. Pedestrian still sixth and still trailing the late running Yvette Singalo. As they go to the far turn, and for the half and 47 and two-fifths, three furlongs to go, Sticks Wonder Girl set to feel some pressure from Yankee Union, who moves up alongside. Midway through the turn, up front, nose to nose, Yankee Union outside, Sticks Wonder Girl to the inside, Jemima's Pearl chasing out third, three links back with a quarter mile left. Well back then to Bonnie Parker, and Lady Jensen begins a run in fourth. Straighting out, top of the lane, inside, Sticks Wonder Girl. Yankee Union is second, and now getting... Drifting backwards, here comes Jemima's Pearl moving up as Sticks Wonder Girl had another gear at the 16th. Sticks Wonder Girl there by a pair. Jemima's Pearl is all out. Sticks Wonder Girl at the rail trying to hold on for a few more strides. Sticks Wonder Girl will win the Oaks by a half length. All the way on the front, Sticks Wonder Girl prevails in the Oaks. Jemima's Pearl second, well back to Yankee Union third. But it is Sticks Wonder Girl, ladies and gentlemen. John Court puts her on the front end from the inside post position as the third choice in the wagering and she never looks back winning by three quarters of a length returning nine dollars and sixty cents jemima's pearl all for three united states in uh, stakes action the even money favorite finishes six lengths in front of the show horse and that was yankee union the second choice in the wagering so the three horses they bet in the remington park oaks hit the board with Sticks Wonder Girl defeating the even money favorite. Sprinting out at Remington Park is up next in the Remington Park Sprint Cup, the eight to five favorite, Al's Vid. They're off in the Remington Park Sprint Cup. Joe Hollywood away sharply, apprehended from the outside right there as well. Al's Vid settles in third, a length back off the leaders. Then China fourth, the gray Wide in fifth, that's Gay Posse, and light up the score. Now advancing at the rail behind Alsvid. The trailer early on is Jake Moe, seven off the lead. As they fly up the back stretch, Joe Hollywood, a half length better than Apprehender, who's applying the pressure with a half mile left. Alsvid, two and a quarter back, third. Light up the score has made its way to fourth as they approach the turn. China's dropped back to fifth. Gay Posse, sixth, four clear of Jake Moe. 22 seconds and change for the opening quarter. They're in the turn now of the Sprint Cup, and it's still Joe Hollywood there by a long neck. Apprehender is pressuring in second. Wide is Alsvid having to swing wide at the quarter pole, but now trying to draw up on even terms. Light up the scores at the rail, waiting for an opening to shoot through. Top of the stretch, Alsvid grabs the lead away from Apprehender. A furlong left, and Alsvid's on the front by a half. Apprehender second, Joe Hollywood back to third. Nothing from light up the score. K Posse is a distant fourth. Alsvid now at the 16th. Apprehender hanging in tough at the rail. Apprehender trying to come back. Alsvid all out in the sprint cup. Apprehender, Alsvid, these two bobby noses. It's close, a photo for the Sprint Cup inside Apprehender, outside Alsvid. And Alsvid scores by a very, very short nose victory. What a photo finish. 
just hangs on to score the victory. Now seven for 10 lifetime, four for five at Remington Park. The fifth stakes victories for Al's vid who went out for Chris Hartman scores the $5.40 popular victory. Apprehender finishes second with K Posse third under Edgar Prado. Time for three-year-olds in action out at Remington Park. The Remington Park, uh, not the Remington Park, but the Oklahoma Derby at Remington Park. And a very familiar face for those of us who watch Saratoga racing very closely. The winner of two stakes in a matter of three days. Willie Beeman coming out of the Billy Caesar barn, the two-to-one favorite. They're off in the Oklahoma Derby. Away sharply, Master Rick grabs the early lead, opening strides, outside Suns Out, Guns Out, and Willie Beeman all right there. Moving at the rail is Diamond Joe, politically correct, and Spite City wrap up the top six as they pass the line. First time, Master Rick on the advantage by a neck. Willie Beeman to challenge from the outside. In between third now is Suns Out, Guns Out as they go to the clubhouse turn. Spite City is fourth, politically correct, settles in fifth, then called to serve ahead better than Diamond Joe. Farther out. Three wide into that turn is perspective. Daniel's best is four wide in the first turn. And Ted's Folly, the late runner, is 11 off of it through the clubhouse turn. 23 and 1 for the opening quarter. Onto the back stretch now. And a speed duel up front. Master Rick and Willie Beeman are going to hook up. They're two clear of Suns Out, Guns Out, and Spite City. Politically correct is fifth. Four off the lead with five panels left. Call to serve outside in the clear six. The neck better than perspective. Daddy knows best after that. Three better than Diamond Joe. Ted's Folly still trails. 13 out of it. 47 and 2 for the half. And a half mile to run in the Oklahoma Derby. Master Rick by a half length. Willie Beeman right there. They've been together for the better part of the race. As they approach the far turn, Perspective makes a move outside into third. Suns out, guns out, down on the rail, fourth, two and a half back, and called to serve is wide, but rolling in fifth. Spite City sixth, politically correct, up the rail, seventh, and advancing. Daddy knows best, nothing yet. Diamond Joe and Ted's Folly at the back. There's a quarter mile left. One minute, 12 and one for the six furlongs, and Willie Beeman has the lead away from Master Rick. Prospective to the outside, Master Rick third at the rail. Suns out, guns out, and called to serve moving together and farther out, Polika correct. Six have a chance with a furlong to go. It's Willie Beeman on the lead by half. Called to serve, Suns out, guns out. Way out in the middle of the stretch, it's politically correct. Willie Beeman called to serve, politically correct. On the far outside, politically correct. Politically correct takes the derby with a very wide run by a half length. And this year's edition of the Oklahoma Derby goes to Politically Correct under Kent DeSormo. I thought a very shrewd ride by Kent DeSormo, especially the early part heading into the first turn. And this is the Saratoga Exacta out at Remington Park returning $106 as Politically Correct for Wesley Ward and the Ramseys returns $22.20. Willie Beeman. After a brilliant effort in the Albany and the King's Bishop at Saratoga runs a good second as the 2-1 to one favorite under Edgar Prado, called to serve, finishes third. Out Finger Lakes way, ladies and gentlemen, the 50th running of the very lucrative New York Breeders Futurity, 2-5 to five in harm's way. We're ready for the New York Breeders Futurity. And there they go in the 50th running of the New York Breeders Futurity. And Waterway is showing good speed, so too is Shot Rock. Dark Roast is mixing it up. And also up there is In Harm's Way, and St. Arthur wants to gun for a piece of the top spot. So it's Shot Rock. And running with him is a stable mate, Stoneless. Waterway pushes the tempo from the top shelf. St. Arthur with a much better start this afternoon. Forwardly placed Dark Roast right there amongst the leading group from the rail. In Harm's Way settles off the pace, joined by West Hills Giant advancing in the clear from the outside. Three lengths to make up at the Three eights. The last three are thanks for the Sun Tequila Hero. An awesome weekend through the turn. And with the lead, it's Stoneless. Waterway pushing him. And West Hills Giant is there with a wide journey, but he's closing. Shot Rock in the two path. St. Arthur trying to re rally up the inside. And they're going to win Harm's Way and Dark Roast in the lane of the 50th running of the New York Breeders' Future. Journey. West Hills Giant has the lead at the eighth pole. St. Arthur shifts ground off the rail. He's in the two path. Tequila Hero's closing to the outside with In Harm's Way, In Harm's Way's closing. It's West Hills Giant, In Harm's Way, St. Arthur Tequila Hero, West Hills Giant. 
West Hills Giant and Jose Espinosa win the New York Breeders Futurity. In harm's ways right there behind him with St. Arthur and Tequila Hero. But it is West Hills Giant, ladies and gentlemen. Jose Espinosa goes out to Finger Lakes for John Terranova after a couple of turf races to kick off the career and out of the maiden victory on Labor Day scores the length and one quarter $15.40 victory over the two to five favorite in harm's way exiting the Saratoga special. St. Arthur finishes third in this year's $200,000 plus Breeders for Charity. We're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, opening weekend from Santa Anita. Some people take analyzing a horse race to a whole other level. Tune in every morning at 11 a.m. and get up-to-the-minute analysis of the day's biggest races, breaking news from the racing industry, and our daily best bets, only on OTB-TV. And they're off with more than 70 convenient locations. Internet wagering at CapitalOTB.com and live operators ready to take your call. Capital OTB is the better choice for wagering on thoroughbred and harness racing. Stop by one of our locations to bet in person or open a Capital Bets account and place your bets over the phone or at CapitalOTB.com. Whether you're on the road or in the comfort of your own home, Capital OTB is the better choice. Some people take analyzing a horse race to a whole other level. Tune in every morning at 11 a.m. and get up-to-the-minute analysis of the day's biggest races, breaking news from the racing industry, and our daily best bets, only on OTB-TV. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Friday afternoon was opening day at Santa Anita as they prepare for this year's renewal of the Breeders' Cup. Used to be known as the Autumn Days Handicap. Now it's the Eddie D. Six and a half furlongs down the hill and exiting the King's Bishop on Bridal's Note, the three to one favorite. And away they go. All appear to come out well. Comma to the top, very fast, will take the early lead, but on the inside it's Chosen Miracle, and Chosen Miracle now sprinting away. Can you let me down easy on the far side? They're flying out on the lead. Just behind the leaders is Unbridles Note, only four off the leaders, Mensa Heat in there too. Along the inside is Calamonco, up alongside of that comes Shrug. Just in behind those two is Tail of a Champion, and they've been followed by Octane, six lengths off the leaders. Behind that comes Crimson Giant. They head down the hill now and still out on the lead. We have Chosen Miracle on the inside and Can You Let Me Down Easy. They're in front by two to come to the top. Unbridles Note is on the far side. In behind that, Mensa Heat. Then we have Tail of a Champion, five off them. Octane is racing right alongside of them. Then Red Sun in behind that comes Shrug. They come for home, this one's wide open. It's Chosen Miracle going on gamely. Chosen Miracle, come to the top along the inside. Unbridled Note on the outside. Can you let me down easy in with a shot too? Unbridled Note on the outside. Unbridled Note strikes the front from Chosen Miracle. Unbridled Note to take the Eddie D. Unbridled Note won it. Chosen Miracle again second, close then for third. Maybe Mensa Heat. And in the field of 12 on opening day from the far outside post position, Cora Nakatani guides on Bridal's note to the $8 victory over Chosen Miracle with Mensa Heat finishing third. Steve Asmussen's runner, a very, very late run and an easy victory. A very typical winning running style down the hill at Santa Anita. Saturday afternoon, much of the uh, Breeders' Cup prep race is underway at Santa Anita. Now, the names are different. But the race configurations are very much the same. Up first is the Chandelier, formerly known as the Oakley for two-year-old fillies. Grade one going a mile on 16th at three to five, executive privilege. And uh, away they go. Miss Empire from the outside gate, executive privilege setting off for the lead as well. And Salamera right there in third on the inside, Majestic Minister. Switch to the lead in the red cap. Wittgenstein was in a bit tight, dropped onto the rail, third last. In behind that comes Scarlet Strike and Butterfly Soul as last, seven off the lead. 
They head to the three-quarter pole and Rafael Bejarano has the favoured executive privilege setting the pace. Tries to slow them down now on a nice long hold, just goes along comfortably, ears pricked. In second comes Miss Empire. On the far side is Salamera down at the rail, Majestic Minister. They've been followed by Switch to the lead in the fifth position. Wittgenstein is five off the leader. In behind that, Scarlet Strike and Butterfly Soul is last. They have a half mile left to go. Executive privilege, still three parts of a length to Miss Empire. Majestic Minister tucked in at the rail third. Salamara on the far side. Now Wittgenstein makes some headway at the rail and Wittgenstein all the way up to second. Just in behind that comes Scarlet Strike. On the far side we have Butterfly Soul and now switch to the leads, drop back last. They come into the top of the lane now and it is still Executive Privilege going easy on the lead. Executive Privilege starts to widen. Confident look back from Rafael Bejarano hasn't moved on her yet. Executive Privilege tier by three. Miss Empire is chasing Gamely from second and Scarlet Strike tries to put in a run. Salamera is far back. Homeward bound now and it is all executive privilege clear by five with a 16th to go. They would need to sprout wings to get to executive privilege. She's unbeaten a smashing fifth win for her. Executive privilege, Scarlet strikes second, Miss Empire finished third. Don't get the chance to say it very often, but there is a runner who made three to five look like a tremendous price. Executive Privilege, now 5 for 5, has been odds on in all five career starts, scores the easy 6-plus length victory while making every pole a winning one for Rafael Bejarano and Bob Baffert. Bob Baffert, who has an incredible record in the juvenile stakes down in Southern California over the last 15 or so years, the seventh chandelier slash oak leaf on his resume, Scarlet Strike finishes second, and Miss Empire finishes third in the first running of the Chandelier. Now, formerly known as the Norfolk, it's time for two-year-olds in the first running of the front runner, the nine-to-five favorite, No More. And uh, away they go, all came out well. No more broke beautifully and no more goes straight to the front. The whole deal carving is ridden along from the inside. They absolutely flying early on. Then we come back to Den's legacy. Power brokers going up to race in fourth. In behind that is imperative. Dirty swag down at the rail. Dry summer in the blue colors is four and a half off these leaders. Then we come back to Gabriel Charles racing back third last. While students second last, and Capo Bastoni going to benefit from this fast pace. He's last early, a good 12 off them. Onto the back stretch they go, and carving along the inside, and no more. They're in front a length and a half to Power Broker. The whole deal is fourth at the rail. On the far side, we have Den's Legacy. Dirty swag down at the rail, and here's Dry Summer in the blue. Now only three lengths off that leader. Then back to Imperative along the inside is Gabriel Charles. Four lengths further back comes Wild Student, and outside of that is Capo Bastoni, nine off the leader. Three-eighths of a mile to go, and carving at the rail, no more before them, and Power Broker, three in a line as they come to the top of the lane. Den's Legacy is in with a shot from fourth. In behind that, we have the whole deal, and let's see, Capo Bastoni. Capo Bastoni is winding up now, he's caught five wide, but he's passing them fast. They come to the top of the lane, no more between them. Power Broker on the outside, these are the two that go on. Power Broker, no more, can stay with him. Capo Bastoni finishing to steadily down the centre, but Power Broker's kicked away. And Power Broker's opening up on them now, and it's a one-horse race. That one horse is Power Broker and Rafael Bejarano. They've won it easily. No more holds second. Capo Bastoni took third, and carving was four. Power broker for Bob Baffert, who wins his sixth Norfolk slash front runner and returns $12.60. Seems like we know that story from the Del Mar Futurity, ladies and gentlemen. This maiden wins the grade one. First time dirt just exploded to win by better than six lengths under Rafael Bejarano. At the end of this show, you'll probably think it was the Rafael Bejarano John Velasquez show, and you would probably be right. No more who won the best pal stakes at Del Mar in the career debut and recently was the runner-up in the Del Mar Futurity, was the only graded stakes winner in the field of 11. 
and Capo Bastoni finishes third, but Power Broker, very impressive, first time dirt. Up next time for the older affiliates and mares and what used to be known as the Lady Secret, now the Zenyatta and two to one from the rail, Amani. And away they go, they all came out beautifully. Going straight to the front is Love and Pride. Love and Pride, the early leader. Joyful victory, the grey at the rail. Via Villaggio's on the outside. Star Billing tucked in there as well. Miss Mittagong, the white cap, forced to go a little wide. Include Me Out, racing right behind the leading group, was switched down at the rail. Only four lengths covers those seven runners. Here's Amani, racing all on her own, now back second last. And at the back comes Love the Way You Are. They head past the three-quarter pole and Love and Pride tries to slow them down now in front by a length. In second comes Via Villaggio. Down at the rail, Joyful Victory has a nice spot. Third, a length and a half off the leaders. Star Billings alongside of her. Switch is very keen to go on. Include me out up alongside of that. Miss Mittagong on the far side. Still not any hurry. Four lengths covers them all. Another three lengths further back comes Amani. And now there's a huge back gap of nine back to love the way you are. They run past the three-eighths pole and Love and Pride had it all the way so far. Goes on by a length and a half. Now here's Joyful Victory coming through at the rail and Joyful Victory's going after the leader. Star Billing on the far side. Via Villaggio's in there as well. Switch going to cut the corner and come after them. Include me out and Amani is still eight lengths off the leaders. At the top of the lane in the Zenyatta and it's Love and Pride. Love and Pride sent about her business. She opens up on them. Love and Pride by two. In second is Joyful Victory. Include me out. Running on on the inside. Homeward bound and Love and Pride in full flight for the wire. And Love and Pride too good for them. Love and Pride and Martin Garcia have won the Zenyatta. Joyful Victory a game second. Close for third. Include me out and Via Villaggio. Love and Pride, recent winner of the Personal Ensign, makes it back-to-back -back grade one victories for Todd Fletcher. She pays $10.20. Joyful victory, who just hasn't been able to regain that early three-year-old form, finishes second at 7-1. And include me out, coming out of the Clement Hirsch victory at Del Mar, finishes third. Amani, second time Lasix, third time United States, the 2-1 to one favorite, finishes fifth in this year's renewal of the Zenyatta. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, more action from Santa Anita and some racing from Belmont Park. Listen to what people are saying about the Clubhouse Race Book. I've been coming here for um, well over 30 years to the OTB, and uh, I think this is an outstanding facility. Probably uh, comparable to something you'd see in Vegas. They have the big screens there, and then they have uh, the auxiliary screens for, you know, watching all the tracks. And the primary tracks of the day, they'll switch to the big screens which is ideal for most of us race guys. We like to see the big races on the big screen. Well done. Hi, race fans. I'm Seth Merrow with some great news. Now you can get live streaming of all our tracks. Just log on to CapitalOTV.com, click on the live streaming link, and choose from more than 35 tracks from around the world. Plus, you can now get race replays. Any day, any track. And don't forget to check out our new virtual tow board. In horse racing, information is key, and no one brings you the crucial information you need like CapitalOTV.com. Live streaming, race replays, and our new virtual tow board. CapitalOTV.com. Check it out now. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Time for the first running of the Rodeo Drive, or Rodeo Drive, or the Yellow Ribbon, which is confusing because they ran the Yellow Ribbon at Del Mar. But this is the real Yellow Ribbon, a mile and a quarter, grade one action, marketing mix, even money. Field sent on their way. They all came away very smoothly. City to city on the far side, and Vivo Per Lay now kicking on to take the early advantage. This is my stage, is tucking in right behind the leaders. Inside of that comes Let's Go Cheyenne, forward be placed early on. Just behind that comes Gambina, racing center of the track, racing in behind those two. We have City to City, broke well, now drop back. Been passed now by Marketing Mix in the gold cap. Along the inside, we have left a message. In behind them comes Stormy Lucy, being followed then by Knee Raid, who's racing at the back of the leading group. Then back to go forth north. Outside of that, I Dazzle. Big gap of five to my Gigi, and Cambina is at the back. 
strung out over a lot of ground as they head to the three-quarter pole and let's go Cheyenne sprinting away on the inside on the far side Vivo Perle let's go Cheyenne Vivo Perle have opened up now they've got to be in front by seven as they move on to the back stretch this is my stage as the red cap alongside a Camellia Rose down at the rail the grey left a message up alongside comes marketing mix been followed then by city to city alongside of that comes stormy lucy my gigi is another one that's in there as well a gap of four back to go forth north i dazzle racing in behind that and a long long way back is cambina they run into the far turn and it's let's go cheyenne let's go cheyenne now by a length but they starting to come after her here's marketing mix and marketing mix is absolutely cruising up to them now marketing mix takes the lead city to city and the pink is hooked wide but coming gamely after them as well my Gigi in behind that they come for home now and it is marketing mix kicked away marketing mix yes nay reed coming with a late run in the center of the track marketing mix nay reed chasing gamely but marketing mix just plain too good scintillating performance today from marketing mix and garrett gomez they win geared down in the end big run from day raid in second Scormy lucy third and then camellia rose and marketing mix coming out of her second place runner-up position in the beverly d under garrett gomez from the number 11 post position in the field of 13 scores the four dollar victory for tommy proctor and his big client glen hill farm uh, knee raid, the 15 to 1 runner up in this field, broke for the number 13 post position. Stormy Lucy finishes third, but Marketing Mix, who wins the Rodeo Drive, formerly known as the Yellow Ribbon. Up next, what used to be known as the Goodwood, now known as the Awesome Again, 3 to 10, game on, dude. And uh, away they go, and Game On Dude broke very smoothly. Winning Machine came out well, and Rail Trip from the outside. Nonios is right there as well. Alongside comes Suggestive Boy. Groove and Solo was in tight and forced to drop back fourth last. Then comes Empire Way, Balladry, and Richard's Kid taken back last, but only eight lengths would cover the whole field. Into the turn they go, and Winning Machine, big long shot, going to set the pace. Winning Machine just at a sensible pace, too, not flying. Game on dude has the perfect spot right there in second, just tracking that long shot on the lead. Rail trip on the far side and Nonyos tucked in down at the rail. Behind that suggestive boy in the fifth spot, only three lengths off the leaders. Alongside comes Groove and Solo on the outside Empire Way. Balladry's back second last and Richard's kid is still last, giving them eight length start. They run to the half mile pole and winning machine still showing the way. Game on dude just sitting patiently in second. Rail trip on the far side is third and Nonyos tucked in at the rail. They've been followed by Suggestive Boy, fifth and four lengths off the leaders. Empire Ways having to be ridden along. Behind that comes Groove and Solo on the far side balladry and Richard's kid is still far back as ten to make up. They come to the quarter pole and game on dude. Now breathing down the neck of Winning Machine with a quarter of a mile to go. Winning Machine tries to dig deep but game on dude still traveling comfortably. Nonyos is next. Rail trip is on the outside. They are homeward bound and game on dude being confidently written. Just given his head and tap on the shoulder and he strides home gamely. Nonyos running a very willing one from second. But Game On Dude is in front three lengths and he's in a class of his own. Game On Dude and Rafael Bejarano again powerful as they storm home to win it easy. Nonius was second, close then for third, rail trip and a fast closing Richards kit. And with Rafael Bejarano now in the saddle for Bob Baffert, Bob Baffert's won three in a row of these, one with Game On Dude last year, Richards kid 2010, but Game On Dude once again extremely impressive campaign this year the job bob baffert has done with this what i thought was a so-so three-year-old has just been hall of fame-ish and game on dude moves forward to the breeders cup as one of the major major players in the classic nonios finishes a second with richard's kid winner of this race two years ago finishing third game on dude pays two dollars and sixty cents eclipsing the three dollars silver charm paid in 1998 for Bob Baffert. And one quick note, as you see these final running times uh, and the stakes races 
on the dirt at Santa Anita. If you took a look at the dirt course, it seemed to be very, very loose. The final running times to me seemed to really go against what my eyes told me. Game on, dude, I thought was brilliant. 148.98, I think the final running times, when you look at the Breeders' Cup for uh, these, uh, the Awesome Again, the Chandelier, and the Front Runner, might have been a little faster than the teletimer tells us. Sunday afternoon, the John Henry Championship. Ironically, in the daily racing form chart, they do note this was formerly run as the Clement Hirsch, I would tell you it was formerly run as the Oak Tree Invitational at three to two, turbo compressor. Feel for the John Henry sent on their way to a perfect start. Turbo Compressor broke smartly along the inside. Temple's Doors now running up alongside. Slim Shady in the black caps right there too and Brushburn on the outside. In behind that, Fire with Fire. Bourbon Bay in the white cap taken back behind the leaders. Races just in front of the grey grassy. Casino host down at the rail and interaction at the back. Through this pet straight first time round, out on the lead is Slim Shady, taking a strong hold, now goes away to lead it by three to Brushburn. Favourite turbo compressor, content to sit back in third, followed by Temple's door. Fire with fire is in fifth, six lengths off the leaders. Then a gap of four and a half back to Bourbon Bay, Interaction is now running up alongside of him. Grassy is sitting back second last and Casino host last, a good 18 off this leader. They run past the three-quarter pole and Slim Shady's really getting away from them now. Slim Shady's keen to go on. Slim Shady's opened up six. Brushburn is in second. On the far side, Turbo Compressor just sitting there in the third spot. Inside of that comes Temple's Door and Fire with Fire. Then a gap of four lengths further back to Interaction. Bourbon Bay is racing far, far back today as third last. Got to be a good 18, 20 lengths off that leader. Grassy's on the far side and then Casino Host. Into the turn they go and Slim Shady now. Slim Shady's kicking on for home. Slim Shady still by six. Now Turbo Compressor is sent after him and Turbo Compressor starts to close the gap. Fire with fire, Temple's door. Bourbon Bay still far, far back at the top of the lane. Slim Shady still clear and going on with it. And it's Slim Shady by three. Now here comes Turbo Compressor closing the gap in second. Homeward bound and Slim Shady digs deep and finds more turbo compressor chasing. But Slim Shady's going to be too good. And Slim Shady and Garrett Gomez have taken the John Henry. Turbo compressor was second. Close then for third, perhaps Interaction or Grassy. But now a grade two starting last year. Slim Shady scores the front end. Catch me if you can. And nobody can catch Garrett Gomez. Pay $8.40 to win this year's renewal of the John Henry Turf Championship. Turbo Compressor, who has found a new better life on the turf, finishes second under Joe Bravo, probably in an impossible position at 3-2 to two with Interaction finishing third. But Slim Shady wins this year's edition of the John Henry. Belmont Park in an extraordinary weekend. Most of the big-time races on Saturday afternoon. Kicking it off with three-year-olds and up Phillies and Maris, the Bell Dame, four to five, Royal Delta. And they're off. It's tricky. Springs right out of the starting gate. Royal Delta came off to a good start, too. And those two are one, two in the early stages here. Cash for Clunkers takes to the outside and is making strides, but little rank is Cash for Clunkers. Then Maristar and Gold Unbridled. So up the back stretch they go, and it's tricky. And her arch rival, Royal Delta. They are right there together, right from the beginning. The opening quarter in 24 seconds flat. So it is. It's tricky with a narrow lead. Royal Delta affixed to her flank here with six furlongs remaining. Break of three to cash for clumpers. Six lengths back to Maristar. Five lengths back to go unbridled. So this chess game continues down the back stretch between It's Tricky and Royal Delta. Five furlongs remaining here. The half was up in 46 and three-fifth seconds. It's Tricky has to pick it up just a little bit more here. And right in tandem goes Royal Delta, a half mile from home. And the two best four-year-old fillies in the land together. And there goes Royal Delta. Royal Delta has taken the lead. Eddie Castro 
emboldened by that challenge with its tricky coming back on the inside. So it's Royal Delta by a half a length, and the whip is out on its tricky as they come to the top of the stretch. And at the quarter pole, it is Royal Delta and Mike Smith opening up on its tricky as they turn for home here at Belmont Park. Way behind in third, it's cash for clunkers, but there's no doubt about the result now. Here is a champion in action, Royal Delta, striding past the eighth pole with a super effort here this afternoon. It's tricky, was no match for Royal Delta today. Geared down to a triumphant victory here in the Beldame, winning by eight lengths. She could have won by much more than that. It's tricky, was soundly defeated today, and go unbridled was third. Everything to like about Royal Delta after this impressive performance. Love the job Mike Smith did by going right after It's Tricky. He got Royal Delta into the action early. It's Tricky looked to be trying early in this race and holds on to finish second. But Royal Delta wins by nine plus lengths, returning $3.70 for Bill Mott. Have to think that Royal Delta's connections have her in a perfect position going into the ladies classic. I don't think she'll run in the Breeders' Cup Classic, but finish up Friday night. It's tricky. Folks, I have to tell you, I, I think the Philly and Mare sprint at seven furlongs might be right up It's Tricky's alleyway. I had hoped she had run in the Alabama, uh, not the Alabama, but the Ballerina versus the Personal Ensign at Saratoga. We'll see if Karen McLaughlin shortens It's Tricky up. Go on bridal, finishes third, but Royal Delta, a tour de force in the Belle Dame. Now we're up to the Kelso, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, used to be a big turf race, but for the third year in a row, a mile on the dirt, even money to honor and serve. And they're off. Shackelford out in stride to honor and serve, came out last. So it's Shackelford out for that early lead, but Trickmeister's gonna make him work for it early on here. Two and a half lengths to the trio of Tapazar, Jersey Town, and Gold Digger's Boy. And to honor and serve is the last of them all. Six lengths behind his main rival today, Shackelford. So up the backstretch, Shackelford, pushed along by Trickmeister through a 22 and two opening quarter mile. And then it's Tapazar moving to third, followed by Jersey Town fourth, Gold Digger's Boy is fifth. And Johnny Velasquez giving to honor and serve a gentle reminder, five furlongs out, and they're now starting to move on the outside as they round the far turn. Up top, it is still Shackelford. Shackelford a length now. Halfway home in 45 seconds flat. A dazzling fraction here over and off track. Shackelford still in front, pushed along on the outside by Trickmeister. Then down toward the rail, Jersey Town coming to contention. And to honor and serve, gets a tap on the shoulder there from Johnny Velasquez. There's still four lengths from Shackelford. And now the field turns for home. Shackelford, Jersey Town coming to him. Trickmeister on the outside. Shackelford's in deep water. And now he's second. And Jersey Town has taken the lead. In the meantime, to honor and serve is way back there in fourth. It is Jersey Town pulling away from Shackelford. Trickmeister to honor and serve and all the rest. They're coming down to the final 16th and it will be Jersey Town. Jersey Town does it. Regain some lost glory today with a clear cut win over Shackelford. Trickmeister was third to honor and serve was fourth. The final mile, 135 and one. But it is Jersey Town, ladies and gentlemen, a runner that I have to tell you I loved on Saturday morning on the Handicappers Report. Javier Castellano takes over the mount from Edgar Prado and I thought did a magnificent job in this field. Gave Jersey Town a perfect trip. He rewards Javier Castellano with a three-plus length victory. Shackelford, safe to say, didn't get much out of the AG Vanderbilt, so a... Second choice, nine to five, well, well beaten second with Trickmeister finishing third. And to honor and serve, shortening up after his good victory uh, in the Woodward Stakes, really a non competitive fourth as the even money favorite. I'm going to take a quick break when we come back, continuing with the weekend action from Belmont Park. Poker is like a war, it's a battle of wits, it's strategy and preparation. Winning is about understanding yourself before the other guy does. Knowledge and skill wins, not luck. For now, 
Put your money aside and challenge your wits. Challenge your skill. Free Poker Network, every Tuesday evening at the Clubhouse Racebook. Welcome to the game. Hi, race fans. I'm Seth Miro with some great news. Now you can get live streaming of all our tracks. Just log on to CapitalOTV.com, click on the live streaming link, and choose from more than 35 tracks from around the world. Plus, you can now get race replays any day, any track. And don't forget to check out our new virtual tow board. In horse racing, information is key, and no one brings you the crucial information you need like CapitalOTV.com. Live streaming, race replays, and our new virtual tow board. CapitalOTV.com. Check it out now. You could wait for money to start falling from the sky, or you could head down to the all-new Clubhouse Racebook and get in the game. With live horse racing on more than 250 flat-screen TVs, state-of-the-art wagering terminals, fantastic food and drinks, and amazing Vegas-style atmosphere with seating for nearly 900 of your closest friends. Conveniently located at 711 Central Avenue, right off exit 5 of I-90 in Albany, the Clubhouse Racebook is the better choice. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, the Grade 1 Vosberg. Up next, Sean Avery and the Lumber Guy, 2-1. to one. And they're off. Poseidon's Warrior hustled out of there. Little drama trying to stay with him. Sean Avery has come away third. And the Lumber Guy will be up close early. He's on the, mo on the move from fourth on the outside. Zero rate policy is fifth on the toward the rail. Rothko slips through in between horses now sixth. Justin Phillip is seventh, but he's only five lengths from the lead. Then down toward the inside, it's Fort Lawton. And two and a half lengths back to Kaisha Electronica as they race into the far turn. The quarter up in 22 and two-fifth seconds. An all-out battle here between Poseidon's Warrior and a little drama. The lumber guy right there with him on the outside. And Sean Avery is ready to roll. He's still on hold. In behind horses as they come to the top of the stretch. Justin Phillip is five from the front. And then at zero right policy, Kaisha Electronic is getting underway. Getting underway in a big way, but he's still got a lot to do after a 45-second flat half mile. Top of the stretch, Poseidon's Warrior, little drama. Here's the lumber guy on the outside. Here's Sean Avery down toward the rail. Here's Kaisha Electronica, who's coming fast, very fast on the far outside. It is the lumber guy, the lumber guy in front. Kaisha Electronica closing as they come down to the line. And it is the lumber guy. He won it by a length. Kaisha Electronica was a hard charging second. Poseidon's Warrior was third, and little drama was fourth. John Velasquez aboard the Lumber Guy, who I think it is fair to say was the lesser half of the entry, saves the Sean Avery fans, scores a very nice one-plus length victory over Kasha Electronica. Poseidon's Warrior finishes third, and Sean Avery, the other part of the entry under Joe Bravo, finishes fifth. But Mike Hushin, Barry Schwartz, they win the grade one Vosburgh. Up next, Phillies and Mares on the turf going a mile and a quarter in the very prestigious Flower Bowl Invitational. The Europeans seem to have this race surrounded. Dream piece, two to one. And they're off. Hit it rich comes out for the lead. And so too Hessenite is over on the inside. Halo Dolly will be forwardly placed. Busy Caroline has come out running in fourth. Zagora fifth on the outside of Dream Peace. Dream Feast followed by I'm a Dreamer and Narain on the outside. So the field moves into the first turn here. And Hit It Rich is out there now by a length and a half. Halo Dolly concedes the lead after an easy first quarter here. And then it's Busy Caroline on hold third toward the inside. Hess Knight under stout restraint as Zagora now moves into fourth position. Narain just to her outside. Hess Knight continues to tug away down toward the hedge. And a pair of Irish dreamers at the back, Dream Peace and I'm a Dreamer. So tight pack moving up the back stretch and it's just a very easy pace early on here as they amble through the opening half mile in 51 and 3 fifths seconds in the nascent stages of this 10 furlong event. Hit it rich with light pressure on the outside from Halo Dolly. And then it's Busy Caroline. Zagora drafting in behind Halo Dolly. Zagora is now running along in fourth. Narain is uncovered on the far outside. She's now fifth. 
And then it's Hest Knight at the back of the pack, followed by Dream Peace, and in her slipstream, it is I'm a Dreamer, three quarters up and a dawdling 17 and two. The race is on though now as they round the far turn. Hit it, Rich, ask for more to hold that lead. Halo Dolly is pressing hard. Zagora making her move here with more than three furlongs to go. Busy Carolon in behind lean. Now reigns in an all out drive too. And then Dream Peace who takes to the outside. Hest Knight shuffled back down toward the rail and I'm a Dreamer and I'm a Dreamer had to study in behind Hest Knight. They are at the top of the stretch and Zagora strikes the lead. Zagora strikes the lead. And here comes Dream Peace coming with her run now. And I'm a Dreamer coming through down toward the inside. Now reigns in between horses. It's Zagora narrow lead. Dream Peace on the outside. Dream Peace on the outside and in between now rain. Now rain comes away with the lead and it is now rain the winner. The winner in a thriller won it by a long neck. It was very close for a second between Dream Peace and Zagora. And I'm a Dreamer was fourth. And the Europeans did have the race surrounded and John Velasquez wins another grade one race and Na Rain returns $12 on the yielding turf course. And this seems to be about the fifth year in a row we have run on a yielding or soft turf course for the Flower Bowl. Zagora finishes a nose in front of the two to one favorite dream piece, but it is Na Rain with the nice, nice victory in this year's edition of the Flower Bowl. Time for three-year-olds and up, going a mile and a half in the Joe Hirsch Turf Classic. At three to four, he's been so good of late, point of entry. And they're off. So it's Little Mike, quite as expected, racing for that lead. On the outside is Treasure Beach, then point of entry is gonna follow Little Mike round there. On the outside, it's Kindergarten Kid, followed by Hailstone and Finnegan's Wake. So they make that long, lazy run to the first turn to establish their positions. And the lead has been established by Little Mike. As Treasure Beach sits uncovered on the outside, point of entry gets a good spot, tracking the leader into the turn. Then Kindergarten Kid, just outside of Hailstone, and the late running Finnegan's Wake is dead last as they make their way around the clubhouse turn. So Arlington Million winner, Little Mike, under the feathery touch there of Ramon Dominguez, just cruising along uncontested on that lead. Treasure Beach is sitting back second, and then point of entry is a tracking third. Kindergarten Kid, Hailstone, half a dozen lengths to fitting his wig. So they make the turn into the back stretch run. The opening half mile is up in 51 and four fifth seconds. Little Mike still the controlling speed here. There's very light pressure here from Treasure Beach, who's just alongside, just prompting that pace. And then point of entry, point of entry sitting chilly. Beneath Johnny Velasquez, they're running along in third. Kindergarten kid followed by Hailstone, another five to Finnegan's Wake. So the positions have remained unchanged for the first half of the race, three quarters up in 118 flat. And the first to break formation is point of entry. Point of entry now sent up three wide. And there goes Treasure Beach, and now he's got the lead. Treasure Beach is the leader, about five furlongs out. Point of entry second, and Little Mike has faded to third. Kindergarten Kid is in a drive, running along in fourth. Another five to Hailstone, and then Finnegan's Wake, who's got about 12 lengths to make up and about three furlongs to do it. So it's the globe-trotting Treasure Beach in front, and here comes point of entry now. Point of entry, Johnny Velasquez has given him his cue. They're driving hard, but they're still second to Treasure Beach, coming to the top of the stretch. And then Kindergarten Kid, Little Mike is spent. The field turns for home. Treasure Beach comes way, way wide off the rail. And that floated point of entry out to the middle of the course. And Kindergarten Kid has come up the fence, but right there at the eighth pole, it's point of entry taking the lead. It is point of entry in front. Treasure Beach can't stay with him. Kindergarten Kid comes down the inside from third, and they're coming down to the finish. And point of entry will go to the Breeders' Cup on a five-race winning streak. Treasure Beach was second. No excuses there. Followed by Kindergarten Kid, Finnegan's Wake got fourth. And the beat goes on for point of entry, ladies and gentlemen, winning everything in sight for Shug McGahee. And John Velasquez wins another grade one race, returning $3.50 for the FIP stable on the yielding turf course. Treasure Beach finishes a non-threatening second with Kindergarten Kid, the second longest shot on the board at nearly 24 to one, finishing third, but nobody 
touching point of entry, at least not uh, on the Naira circuit and not at least at this point in time. Up next, the Jockey Club Gold Cup at 5-2 to two off of the staggeringly impressive Whitney Fort Lauderdale. They're in the gate. And they're off. Stay Thirsty is hustled out of there. There goes Sam Pablo with his early speed. Ruler on Ice is also forwardly placed and under a busy ride. So around the first turn they go, and it's Stay Thirsty in front, Ruler on Ice, and Sam Pablo. Those three out there early on, and Fort Larned's not far behind them in fourth. And then Himbook settles back in fifth place. Flat out is reined in to run back sixth here, beyond a solid pace up front early on. Then it's a break of two and a half back to Anagan. And then at the back of the pack, Ron the Greek, who's already about 14 from the front. Fast Falcon and game ball. Three of them after that lead down the back stretch run. They put up a quarter together in 23 and two fifth seconds. So it's Stay Thirsty and Ruler on Ice, one, two. San Pablo makes it three across the track, and Fort Larned lets those three battle out. He sits back in fourth place down the back stretch run. The half was up in a strong 47 and one fifth seconds. And then Flat Out is still under a good hold there. He's about six from the lead, followed by Himbook under the white hot hands of Johnny Velasquez. They're about seven from the front. Then farther back, stretch running Ron the Greek. He's still settled into an easy beat. He's drawn within nine lengths of the lead now. Adigan and Fast Falcon are moving in tandem with a half mile to go here. Long shot game ball trails the field. Stay thirsty, San Pablo. Fort Larned makes his move. There goes Fort Larned after that lead with three furlongs remaining here. Flat out, only four from the front. Then Himbook and Fast Falcon uncoiling that long stride of his. And he angles down toward the inside as the field comes to the top of the stretch. Stay thirsty, confronted by Fort Larned as the field turns for home in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. Last year's winner, Flat Out, is right there now. He's third on the outside and driving hard. The three-year-old Fast Falcon fourth, one furlong to go. Stay thirsty, stay thirsty, still there. But here comes Flat Out, Flat Out on the outside, and Stay Thirsty, who's hanging on bravely. Stay Thirsty down inside, and Flat Out, who comes with the last gasp lunge to win. Flat Out got it by a flared nostril over Stay Thirsty. Fort Larned was third, and then it was Adigan finishing fourth. But it is two in a row for Flat Out. Joel Rosario getting the route mount as Rosie the Prophet was out of town, flat out, won this race last year, coming out of the Charlie uh, Scooter Lepresky, Scooter Dickey barn. But this year, Bill Mott having flat out. Now, I don't know if it's Belmont Park for flat out. I do think the turns help flat out. I don't know if it's Bill Mott's patience if flat out is coming up to his best performance in the Breeders' Cup Classic. I don't know. But in the Jockey Club Gold Cup on Saturday afternoon, a very impressive $9.30 victory. Stay Thirsty, perhaps the finest performance of his career. And yes, I know he won the Traverse Stakes last year and it has a rather ambivalent four-year-old campaign, but was very good in defeat. And Fort Lauderdale, coming out of a career best performance in the Whitney, finishes third. The weekend action isn't finished yet. They've changed them up a little bit. The matron used to be the seven furlong prep for the Frisette. Now it's at six furlongs run on Sunday afternoon. And Kawhi Katie, one to five. And they're off. An uneventful start for Kawhi Katie and a very sharp start for Baby Jay is going to the front. So it's Baby J to be the leader. Kawhi Katie on the outside, second on a bash, third, followed by Doubledon, seasoned warrior. Baby J taking the field into the far turn, but right alongside looms a heavy favorite in Kawhi Katie as they race for the half mile pole. Baby J, Kawhi Katie through a 22 and four opening quarter mile. Seasons Warrior ranging up on the outside, just in behind on a bash, and then doubled as they make their way midway on the far turn. Baby J still with a narrow lead. Kuai Katie right alongside. They're head to head as they approach the top of the stretch. Just behind them, it's Seasoned Warrior. The field turning for home. Rosina Provick has not asked Kuai Katie for anything yet. And now just a just a cue, and she's gone on her way. Uh, gone on her way to lead here by three, four lengths. Kuai Katie running away from them. 
Rosie Naprovnik asked for a little run and got a lot of run out of this very, very impressive two-year-old filly. Kuwai Katie just cruised home today, beat the competition, if you could call it competition, by better than a half a dozen lengths. Baby J was second here, and Season Warrior was third. And Kauai Katie, now three for three, adds the matron to her resume, having won the Adirondack at Saratoga, wins by better than seven lengths, two dollars and forty cents in the field of five. Baby Jane finishes second, and Season Warrior finishes third, but Todd Pletcher and Stone Street send out the very, very quick Kauai Katie. Look at that final running time, 1.11. Point six because now it's time for the boys in the futurity at nine to five weekend hideaway. And they're off. Weekend hideaway and carried interest both get away well. Squeeze back at the start was Gulfport up the back stretch and coming off the rail carried interest. Carried interest to go on very wide. There's plenty of opportunity inside for Handsome Jack, and now he seizes that inside position. Weekend Hideaway on the outside runs along in third. Special Joe is fourth. Drumroll is now fifth. And Gulfport very wide and moving from sixth a long way back, six lengths. Back to the trailer overanalyzed around the far turn. On the fence, it is Handsome Jack. And Gulfport ranging up there on the extreme outside. In between those two, it's carried interest. Also in the thick of it, too, is Weekend Hideaway. A break of three back to drum roll special, Joe. And Overanalyze, who's starting to come on now, and takes to the outside, Overanalyze. They're at the top of the stretch. Carried interest going at it with Handsome Jack. Weekend Hideaway now comes up to join them. And on the far outside, it's Overanalyze, who's made a big run from last. They're down to the final 16th. Carried interest. And Overanalyze keeps on coming and will win the futurity going away in a good looking effort today. It was Overanalyze. Carried interest was second. Weekend Hideaway was third. And then farther back, Handsome Jack. Overanalyze. A Todd Pletchy Rapoli stable, $13.60 winner for John Velasquez. It seems like we saw those prices a couple times for Todd Pletcher up at Saratoga, but a very, very nice victory for over. Analyzed, carried interest, finished second, and weekend hideaway. The New York bread finishes third at 9 to 5, and you see the final running time there of 111.46. The girls went two tits two tenths or one tick faster than the boys. That wraps up this week's edition of Horses and Courses. Ladies and gentlemen, we invite you to join us next week as we recap opening weekend at Keeneland and some more Breeders' Cup prep racing action.